Hi everyone. So it's Saturday today and I haven't uploaded a video all week long. So I apologize for that, but there have been extenuating circumstances which I will relay to you now. So <clears throat> first thing to say is I've actually been a little bit under the weather. Nothing serious, just a bit of a cold, sore throat, blocked nose, that kind of thing. And a couple of my kids have had the same and had some time off school with it. So I've just been a little bit under the weather, but further to that, it's just been an absolutely catastrophic week for things going wrong and taking up more time than they should. Last weekend, I lost a day because it was my father-in-law's birthday, and as a birthday present, I went round there and helped build an aviary for him in his garden. Morning, girls. The goats are saying hello, as always. How are you doing? And they're producing a ridiculous amount of milk. How are we doing? Please do also report back and let me know how we're doing with uh, mic and vision quality and stuff because I've got a new camera now and a new mic and I'm hoping this is going to be the setup. So I uh, apologise for the audio quality in the last few, but I think we're kind of over that now. I've written a little list so I don't forget all the things that I want to share with you. Got some huge news. Today is the day. Haircut. This is the last day of my crazy, ridiculous hair. We've got our hairdresser coming round. It's my wife's cousin who cuts our hair. And uh, she's coming round this afternoon. It was the first visit we could get after lockdown. So that's exciting for sure. Look at how full their udders are. So they're producing so much milk. Now, if I was milking them, I'm milking them once a day. And we're getting about five litres a day. So... What does that work out to? R roughly 10 pints. We could get double that if we were running at maximum capacity. They'd give that twice a day if you know we were geared up to do that, but, but we're not. Yeah, so the kids went last weekend. So this is our first week of full milk production. And uh, we've just been slowing down the morning milkings and finally getting to the point now where we're just milking once a day. So they are gonna be full a little bit earlier than we're ready to milk but that's part of the process and you know we gradually change the amount we're taking so that it works for them works for us and then ultimately they're not running at maximum capacity we don't need that much milk you know 10 pints a day is a lot for a household even if we are doing all those other ancillary things with it that we do like making cheese and cream and butter and ice cream and all those things uh, you know 10 pints a day is still a lot to get through and one of the reasons why I've struggled this week is because we're trying to deal with all that excess produce and as always right at the start of the milking season we're never quite ready for it so I've gone to make cheese one night this week and my rennet has just gone so rennet doesn't keep very long and our rennet from last year uh, didn't work so my first lot of milk failed but I didn't realize that when I started making it. So it's a three day process. Day one, you use the rennet and your culture. And I'll be doing lots of this. We'll be making milk probably, maybe even once a week, but certainly once a fortnight over the next few months. So there'll be plenty of opportunities for me to share that with you. But basically the first night you add your rennet and your culture to your milk, and then you leave it to set and form curd. So I did all that. And then I went to my cheese making supply drawer that I have in my office and I'd run out of cheesecloth. So the following day at work, I had to drive off somewhere straight after work to pick up cheesecloth, which meant I didn't get home till quite late. And then I got home and saw that the curds hadn't really formed, you know, because of the rennet and basically the cheese had failed, which isn't the end of the world. You know, we'll feed that to the pigs and they'll enjoy it. But it just... Uh, I was kicking myself because I could have saved myself that hour and a half drive after work. So that was one evening when I got home a bit late and then by the time we milked the goats, it's just, I didn't have any time to do anything else. I've started filming two or three times in the evenings this week and then uh, not ended up with anything I can use really because something or other's gone wrong. I'm just gonna turn the hose on here so I can water my seedlings in the polytunnel. That's where we're going next. So I was r I'm really am running at 100% capacity at the minute. So one night was making the cheese in addition to all of our usual stuff. And you know, that didn't go anywhere in the end. That was a failure. And then the following night, I wasted my any spare time I might have had to do things like editing, running around getting cheesecloth that I didn't need. So another day, I uh, had my trailer loaded up with some stuff that we wanted to take to the recycling center. And um, 
so I went to the one that's local. It's about five minutes from here. And they were closed because they're not all open five days a week. So they were closed. Then we went to another one, which was about 20 minutes further on, but that's across a county border. And in that county, I wasn't allowed to bring my trailer in. So then I ended up doubling back and going to a third one, which was probably an hour away at that point in the opposite direction. So again, that just killed all my spare time that day. So it's just been one of those weeks. The other thing has just been the actual milking process. We, we've, we've been struggling a little bit, me and the girls. Well, the girls more than me. Where they each had twins. Look at my poor tomato plants here. I have been watering them regularly. Maybe a little too regularly. Maybe I'll let them dry out a little bit today. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you're a tomato plant expert, let me know what's going on here. I am aware that they're big enough to get out of these pots, but I wasn't sure where they were going yet. Anyway, so with regards to the girls and the milking, yeah, they each had twins and the twins were quite tough on them physically around their teats. So their teats have got sores on. Couple that with the fact that their teats are not the right size for me to milk by hand and I have to use a machine means it's just taking a really, really long time to do the milking at the moment, like literally an hour versus 20 minutes what it should take because I'm, I'm just being super gentle and we're trying to sort of encourage their teats back to health, if you like, and to heal up. But uh, yeah, so, you know, that's something that usually should, usually I should be able to get home, milk the goats, feed, uh, water my seedlings, feed the pigs, do any other peripheral kind of bits and bobs that I need to do and then get in the house within an hour. Whereas at the moment it's taking me almost two hours to do those things. So by the time I've cooked dinner, there's no time left for filming or editing or anything like that. So that's one of the reasons. And that's going to settle down over the next week or two. The other thing, last thing that kind of threw a spanner in the works time-wise this week is one of the fruit and veg shops that we collect uh, waste from, they, uh, they don't like me to just turn up. So usually I just kind of, I know roughly, you know, I've got one that's on a six day cycle. So I just go there every six days and that's about right to clear their bins. Well, one doesn't like me to do that. They like to call me or text me and say, right, the bin's full and we're ready for you. Well, they text me at like three in the afternoon saying your bin's overflowing. Can you get here today, please? Which gave me no notice and it just, you know, threw everything again out of kilter. So it's just been one of those weeks. I've also sorted out new mic and camera please tell me this is working and uh you know hopefully we're sorted now yes yeah, so all that stuff has, has gone in and then um you know two weeks two weekends ago i had to work remember i pointed that stone wall and then last weekend i lost a day building this aviary and weekends are when i just get so much stuff done here and they're so important to me and then this weekend i was fully booked saturday and sunday leading a foraging walk down in devon well the saturday's one has actually been postponed due to weather they were expecting really bad weather which it looks like they're not going to get now actually but they postponed it a few days ago just in case and i have to say i was so relieved because two reasons Firstly, it means I can catch up on all those evenings that I lost and, you know, at least get back to where I should be. And secondly, and this is the most important one, my hair. <laughs> because I was going to miss the hairdresser tomorrow, uh, today, but now I'm going to make it. So look at everything just coming on nicely here. So these are our dwarf French beans. They're called purple teepee. And in the next few days really we're over the nights where it's getting down to two degrees now we might get one or two more but uh you know it's starting to the, the nighttime temperatures are starting to settle down a bit now so these guys can be going out very very soon we've got some senesta beans which are a little bit behind them still and we've also got this runner bean which is a variety called lady die and it's supposed to be a stringless runner bean so it'll be interesting to see how these guys get on out there We've got more tomato plants and pepper plants now germinating, just coming through. See these pepper plants back here? And we've got bolotti beans. So again, all of these beans will be going out in the next few days. Our pumpkins, maybe a week or so after those. Um, we've got all these courgettes. 
Now we won't need all these plants. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there. So we'll probably sell a couple of those at the side of the road. I think we probably want five or six plants. That's usually enough to meet our demands for growing for gluts. You know, gives us enough to preserve and save. We've got those there. We've also got some more. Oh, here, right next to them. These are, so these are the yellow ones and these are the green ones, but I've only got one of these germinated for some reason, but that'll be enough. So we'll have one green and we'll make up the rest with the yellow. Uh, down here, I've got some radish. Now I'm gonna plant these out. I could probably get away with just leaving them to grow on in here because they're such a quick crop, but I need the space in this polytunnel because there's quite a bit of sowing that I want to do today. This is our basil. This is all basil. Some of this will get transplanted and some of it will stay in the pots. That's doing all right. These tomatoes, I put these in in our first round of seeds probably six or eight weeks ago and they've just sat there dormant and decided to go for it in the last week or so we've got more spring onions there which again i'll probably leave till they're a little bit bigger before i transplant them out and then we've got two lots of cucumbers which again will let get a little bit bigger before we put them in the ground in the other polytunnel and then in here in these pots we've got a french bean called nun's belly button and they're an heirloom variety. We've got loads of cos lettuce and iceberg lettuce here, which we'll probably start hardening off in the next few days and then they'll go out. We've got a few Brussels sprout plants, plenty of carrots all coming through. Loads and loads of herbs germinating down here. We've got some honey boat squash. These are going to be going along our back wall to climb up on our bamboo wall. But again, we'll leave them in here for at least another week. Asparagus peas there. Only a few of our cauliflower have germinated, but that's OK. We've got lots of cabbage and these are all for succession sowing now. And we've got some jalapeno peppers and some other hot peppers coming out over here, along with the rest of these herbs, which are miscellaneous. I don't know what they are yet. Those are the ones where the, the rat took the label and our beetroot back there. So I wanna sow some more today if I get chance. So the things I want to sow today, I want to sow some corn, some sweet corn. And uh, I think that's gonna be one of the things that I really get a lot of use out of in September because I'm turning my attention towards my September survival challenge, my apocalypse survival challenge or self-sufficiency challenge, call it what you will. In September, I'm only going to be eating and drinking things that we can produce here. Oh, you know, there's one thing I didn't show you that I'm excited about. I can't believe I missed it up the top here. So you'll remember me planting my pea shoots and my chickpea shoots. And just look. Look at them going for it. So these guys were planted really, really densely. And the plan is for those that we harvest the whole plant when they're not very big. And then out here, what we've got is um, the same two things chickpeas and peas but these guys they're very very dense but not nearly as dense as those ones in there and you can see they're all starting to germinate now but these guys are actually going to allow to grow on to be bigger plants but we're still going to harvest shoots from them so it's like a a really quick short-term crop in there and then a, a fairly quick and then a medium term longer term crop here that we're going to be able to keep cropping we've had two or three crops of asparagus already which is just amazing absolutely love it you can see down here we're going to be ready to crop again in a day or so i need to weed this bed again this one's needed quite a bit of weeding this year but uh they're all no you know nothing serious our potatoes let me show you goodness me so today the, some of the things i want to sow today include potatoes i want to sow a load of main crop potatoes up in this bed through here which i weeded in the week but look so we've got first early potatoes all up through here. Second earlies in that second row there. And they're all doing really, really well. And then we've also got another couple of rows of different varieties of first and second earlies, I think, through this section here. You can just see them coming out now. So yeah, I definitely want to get my main crop potatoes in today. Um, as I've mentioned, I want to get some corn in today and then I also need to start succession sowing. We're gonna to want to succession sow some carrots, some lettuce and some beetroot. So those are the things we're gonna be sowing 
today. But for now, the first job on my list, I'm gonna to go to my container and pick up my supers for my beehive. And we're gonna put our foundation in them and uh, add them to our frames. And that'll be in a separate video because I'm gonna do a video with me, you know, opening up the beehive and going through the whole process. But I think that gets you caught up, gives you some idea where we are. And uh, I'm gonna put this out just as a sort of catch up video and then uh, there'll be lots more that I'll be recording today and we'll be showing you the milking maybe some cheese making later in the week we'll be showing you the bees all that other stuff you know we are phenomenally busy as always and uh, I'll also be unveiling my slightly hopefully less ridiculous hair thanks for watching guys and I'll speak to you really soon cheers